It really has been an eventful weekend here in London, but not for Arsenal, for Man City. But we are here to talk about Arsenal. Don't worry about it. Welcome back to Lawrence McKenna channel. I'm sorry I haven't been around for a while. I was sick. No sympathy. And then I was actually working. No sympathy. But Arsenal have really been working and boy, have they been sick. And it's been quite satisfying to watch for someone who for such a long time has backed Mikel Arteta. And I'm sure in a similar way you have too. Obviously, you obviously support them probably rather than me. But yeah, it's been so vindicating to watch a manager who was originally quite aggressively pigeonholed into de over defensiveness, overly cautious, um, overly copycatting other managers, to now have such an adaptable style of play, to now have such an adaptable team, to now have players like Kai Havertz, who, when they gave the interview on Sky Sports over the weekend, said one of the, if not the specific reason I came to Arsenal, was because of Mikel Arteta, because I wanted to work with this guy. That's wild, no? And then you see, in a game like the game against Manchester United, why he would want to do that. But what's really fascinating about Arsenal, and I mean this in the best way, is not only can you see where they're going, but you can also see where they're about to make upgrades or where they're about to improve this team, again, what feels like exponentially. And like, when I say exponentially, what I mean is, obviously there's, there's only so much a team can get better. But when you change very specific pieces like a parte, or you look a little further up and you were to have like an interchangeable front line with Kai Havertz and Gabriel Jesus and maybe even another striker in there, or seeing Tommy Asu come in, or you know, even even the idea of using Yuri and Timber just anywhere in this side, it makes you feel like the team is completely different. And here's the weird thing about it, right? This team that they field every week is completely different. Sometimes they will dominate, sometimes they will sit back. Very often they'll dominate the goal difference. Even if people talk about them being blunted or whatever, or they want to apologize to whoever or whatever, right? But what is really fascinating about it is that even though they lacked possession against Manchester United, and I'm sure someone is going to rely on that as sirens go by, right? I'm sure someone's going to talk about why they relied, relied on that. They broke on Manchester United. And what was weird about it is Arsenal have this amazing control of game state. And what I mean by game state is, or, you know, pitch tilt, whatever you want to say about it. They are really good at almost analyzing and then psyching out the opposition to such a degree that they don't know what they're doing. Like the, the opposition are almost a little bit confused by it. Arsenal have 46% possession today. So roughly 45% possession, less than Manchester United, less shots than Manchester United. Their XG was better by about goal, but they had less of almost everything than Manchester United did. And yet still, I watched that game and thought Arsenal looked by far the more comfortable team. Probably because Manchester United fluffed their lines multiple times. They had multiple players who made serious and crazy mistakes. And also that Manchester United looked very low in confidence and almost, I don't want to say on the beach, but like kind of looking towards next season already, right? That must be incredibly frustrating if you're a United fan. But at the same time, you could see the Eric Ten Hag fingerprints. You could see at the end of the game how disappointed but also relieved he was that he held Arsenal to what he did, but also that he managed to get this fight in against Mikel Arteta so late in the season. There is still an element of pride, I think, around a team, or still an element of, I guess, the mini motivations within a season for Manchester United that they can stop Arsenal from doing something. They can be the thorn in those sides, but also that they, in the very, like, you know, micro nature of that game stop them in that game because they have a backline of Casemiro and Johnny Evans now that might be a damning thing that maybe we should talk about at some point that Arsenal only managed to score one goal against a backline which really was very makeshift but it's not as if they didn't create some significant chances and actually if their finishing have been a lot better I think Arsenal probably walk away from this game for two up, even if Manchester United massively improve their possession and massively improve their uh, finishing themselves. Point being, there are so many interchangeable pieces in this team and it feels so shape-shifty, almost... It's not Tetris. What's the other one? The, the cube, the Rubik's cube, right? It feels Rubik's cube-like. That every time that you move like a Tomiyasu in at left-back or you put in 
a parte in midfield to push Rice even further forward and then see Kai Havertz like drop back and almost play as like a two in that midfield pushes Saka way further down the field and then obviously you also get a lot more Atrosa but then when Saka then gets injured or whatever it is you then see that when Gabriel Jesus comes on there is a very different shape to the whole team in the first place this level of adaptability is like an advanced level of structured football that frankly only a few managers in the Premier League ever achieve and I know we you know we're over the whole Arsene Wenger thing there's clearly some fingerprints of that there there is clearly especially when you look at diagonal runs within a team something there that still feels like very Arsenal. And it's not just like saying, oh, this is the new Arsenal. I mean, like this feels Wenger DNA-esque at times in the way that the team is put together. Now, some people then say, oh, well, that's negative because this that team were bottlers or that team didn't achieve what they were meant to achieve or they weren't as good as they should have been or blah, blah, blah. And yet I am looking at that side and thinking they are st- like, there is no... There is no resemblance to that same team that was there last season. The goalkeeper obviously is different, and that does make a big difference. I think Raya has made a huge difference this season. But just, they would have dropped away previously. City went to Fulham and killed them. Against the Fulham side, that are still relatively motivated. Obviously not anywhere near the level of Man City, and they got beaten by Liverpool, a relatively poor Liverpool team. But that City side, like, demolished them. Anyway, point being, remember the Arsenal of last year? Now look at the Arsenal of this year. Who's putting the pressure on who? City have two games left, of course, and they will probably go into the last day of the season. In fact, they are almost certain to go into the last day of the season, top of the league. Because as much as it would be very Spursy to do something and go ahead and, you know, take points off City, let's face it, that's not going to happen. Having said that, even when we thought that Liverpool would fall to second place against City. There were times where on that last day of the season, there was hope. And where there is a bird that could be in your hand when there is that would be worth two in the bush, the phrase makes sense. Think about where Arsenal are at. They went away to Old Trafford, which now, by the way, has a waterfall installed, incredibly. And got a really difficult win, like a really difficult win, a really horrible, unpleasant, invigorating, satisfying win to head into the last day of the season. And this Arsenal team, when Liverpool are now solidified in third, are now the only hope that the Premier League have of representation, of at least the idea that there is some competition in the league, even if that competition is between the most consistent coaches and investors of recent years. That's fine. That's that's good, if anything. Like There should be more challenges like that. Very windy here. Sorry about that. Stop. Close. Point being, this Arsenal side are different now. You can feel a corner has been turned. A chapter has been ended and another one has been opened. Martinelli... Saka both took very specific briefings in this game to run at very specific areas in that Manchester United back line to make it as uncomfortable as possible for the likes of Casemiro and all those other guys. And guess what? You put pressure on that back line for long enough, and of course they are going to crumble. Casemiro was caught very deep. And Arsenal will have known that he would be very deep. Where's that play? There. Who's that? And they will have known that Manchester United look uncomfortable in certain ways and that Eric Ten Hag looked really uncomfortable too. My man of the match today, I still love what Declan Rice does. I still think he's fantastic. But I think Thomas Partey has been brilliant in that midfield. I just wonder what his future in that side is and whether in the summer they can upgrade on him. It's a weird one because a lot of people love him. A lot of people have got a lot of affection for him. But with the question marks recently, I think it's caused a lot of people to reassess how they feel about this Arsenal team, or at least Partey himself. And I I'm not talking about whether that's been resolved or not. I don't actually know. Because guess what? I'm not privy to what the cops say. Anyway. This team is different. And they are now putting pressure on Man City. They are making this into a satisfying title race. When maybe we didn't think that was possible. Maybe I did. Maybe you did, but at the start of the season, 
a lot of people would have said Arsenal would have fallen away by this point. A lot of people would have said this team will not go away and get some of those results they've gotten more recently. Think about how satisfying that is as an Arsenal fan. I know it's weird. You guys really get on top of yourselves. What I find most unusual, shall I say about it, is you've now changed the perception in other people about you. And that I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't really know if Arteta had that in him. Like I knew it was possible, but I didn't know if it was actually going to happen. Think about how satisfying that is. You know, it's not about the title. You get the win that you were proven right about Mikel Arteta. And obviously it'd be lovely if he does it with the title. But you were right. It's ten times better to be right than have a parade. It's also ten times better to not have charges against you, but we'll get onto that later. I'll see you later in the week. I'm going to be previewing the last uh, day of the season. I'm going to be at Anfield for the last day of the season, it seems like. So I won't actually be able to come and see the parade, which I'm actually kind of gutted about. Do you think the parade will be on the Monday? I've still got that feeling. I just got that feeling. There's still a little bit of hope. Talk about that more tomorrow. Much love. I'm glad to be back on the channel. Thanks to the people who remained loyal in this time. To the people who are unsubbed. I'm sorry you felt I had to delete your account. Much love. See you in a little while.